Welcome to Saturday Science with Miss Steph, where we do two fun STEAM activities every Saturday at 2.30 Eastern Standard Time. We shoot live on Facebook, Instagram, and then show you the replay on YouTube. Are you ready? Let's go. Boom. Yay. And guess what? We are live, folks. Okay. Um, we're live on both Facebook and Instagram. And for those of you watching on the replay on YouTube, thank you so much. And don't forget to subscribe so that you can be up to date with all of this fabulous science arts, technology, engineering, mathematics, um, yes, content. It's Miss Steph here with you for Saturday Science with Miss Steph. And let's go ahead and launch right into act the activity and I'll do the chit chat and all that kind of stuff a little bit later. Today, we're going to continue on our super absorbent adventure, right? And we talked last week and the week before and the week before that about what super absorbent means. So super and absorbent, kid you not, they literally, it just means um, that. So super meaning can do it at a higher level than normal and absorbent meaning it can draw in something, typically a liquid when you're talking about absorbing. And this particular um, polymer and substance is a super absorbent um, substance of water. So these things right here are gel crystals. Last week we used water gel. The week before we used um, our little water cube thingies. And so today our jelly crystals are saying that they can absorb up to 300 times their weight in water, all right? And we tested last week, okay, do super absorbent polymers, um, the ones especially that have water in their name, do they absorb um, on this high level um, other liquids. And we found out, no, they, they are not super absorbent. They don't pull in, they don't suck up like um, other liquids at the level that they suck up, that they absorb water. So um, now that we have that information, let's explore, let's experiment and find out whether or not the volume of the water that you put these same types of materials in have any type of effect. Does that change what's going on? Does that make sense? All right. Thank you for joining us today. Um, does that matter? The amount of water that I put inside of my um, reaction table. So once again, for folks who are just joining us, thank you so much. Um, we are working with our jelly crystals today. And we do have three different samples that we're going to do. Actually, let me do it like this. Three samples, ladies and gentlemen, persons, and it's three different colors. They're all the same compound. And so instead of adding food coloring to them today, I actually have um, these things that are already have color with them. So I'm gonna set up my three samples. I've got a 20 milliliter sample. Remember I'm talking about changing my volume today. Instead of my liquid or um, my timing, right, I'm changing my volume today. So I'm going to do a 20 milliliter sample. And yes, I am just using regular water. It's a little, slightly warm. Um, 40 milliliters and 80 milliliters. Okay, now let me show this to you so you can see I am able to actually go up to 100 milliliters on this particular measurement device. Okay. And for those of you um, folks out there, kids wondering, does, do I have to be able to use measurement in real life? Yes. 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 You have to measure in real life. It matters. Okay. It matters. And this particular activity is going to prove to us that yes, it matters. 
So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add my liquid first. Now, one of the things that I just really want to point out is measurement technique is a little hard to display. Hello, we've got somebody on Facebook as well. It's a little hard to display and really truly demonstrate properly when I'm filming in this way because typically you want to be on a flat surface and you want to come down. So I would need to like come all the way down here. I'm going to come down. I'm actually going to tilt myself just so you can see how a scientist really measure stuff people this is what it is this is real science okay so i need to come all the way down and make sure that i'm i typically would want to be level but again that's a little hard to demonstrate for you okay but i'm going to come down and i'm going to 20 milliliters okay and then over here i'm going to 40 milliliters right and so you're coming down at the level so that you're looking at the level proper level okay you wouldn't normally hold it you know how normally I'm showing you and I'm holding it up like this so that you can see but that's not the proper way because if it if it's not flat then you're not sure that you're on that line folks this is real science this is some real life stuff that I'm teaching you here okay this is what we're doing all right so yeah so let's go ahead and continue on so that our samples have long enough to set right and so this up here and I'm gonna like mm -hmm, working with the camera just 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 you know be patient with me okay so yeah so this sample is a 20 milliliter sample of water this is 40 milliliters there middle liter and 80 you see that I just kind of doubled it they go along We've got our three different jelly crystal well welcome 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 thank you for joining us today for saturday science with miss steph folks share this with the community let them know what we're doing i am on every saturday yes at some point in the summer i'm going to take a break by the way though okay all right um i am on every saturday 2 30 ish okay i come at you live and as you can tell, these days we, we're going live both on Facebook and on Instagram. And then we do, I do an upload, I should say we rather, I rather do an upload and throw this on, on YouTube so that folks can catch the replay and like really go through it and learn the information. And we're learning about super absorbent polymers today. We've got our gel, our jelly crystals. Okay, so let's do this. All of my three samples are going to have the same amount, okay, of the jelly crystal inside so that you can um, find out the comparison in that way. Um, let's go with this. Just to make sure my color doesn't go. That's it. Okay. I'm doing this quickly so that uh, I'm not getting a change in time. Okay, right, boom, you see it, you see it, okay? Make sure you like, comment, and share on this video, folks. We want to make sure that everybody is getting this content, okay? And that it's not something that's just for a select group of people, but that, you know, our kids are able to get um, quality exposure to quality. Okay, um, this is real science. Okay, you see, we did three samples. Let's do that as quickly as possible. Some of you might be saying, but and stuff, you're using three different kinds of jelly crystals. I'm not. They're all the same thing, they're just different colors. Okay. All right, so I'm going to do what you know what I'm about to do. This was our activity we did first because this is our time sensitive situation. Let's put these to the side. This is what they look like right now, everybody. Do you see? Right? This is what we're working with at this point. Boom. See it? A good look. All right? Three different samples. And they all had in this same amount 
of um, our jelly, okay, our jelly crystals. Next, let's move on. Now I'm going to go on to an art activity. Yes, I am. Why? Because art and science go together. If you learn nothing from me other than the fact that color makes everything better, huh, hey, you should also be aware and have a clear understanding that the arts and sciences do go together. Okay? Let me show you how. I've got a piece of paper. And I'm going to do some kind of playing with. Thank you for joining me today on Instagram and on Facebook. And like I said, this will also go up on YouTube for folks who want to see the replay. And definitely, if you subscribe to my YouTube channel, yes, Shameless Club, um, you will get a chance to really um, go over the content and learn, 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 learn lots of different concepts. As I was saying, we're going to have a little bit of art fun here. Okay. We're going to look at art um, from the scientist's perspective, right? So art is, definition of art kind of varies a little bit, but essentially it's those pieces of things that makes our lives better and that brings out beauty, right? Where we're able to notice what we consider as beauty, okay? So paintings and video and um, things that make commentary on life, okay? That's art, right? That's being creative. Now, science, okay? It's the study of the natural world, okay? That's the basic definition of science, the study of the natural world. So when you're creating art and using different tools Okay, you need to have a con an understanding, okay, a good understanding of how the natural world um, acts, right? So how does paint react or interact with or mix or does not mix with a certain type of liquid? How does it lay down? Does it smoothly lay down on this cardstock or will it be smoother on another piece of type, another um, type of paper? Right, so that's how we're we're looking at things. We can be scientifically minded and still be creative at the same time. And I always encourage you to be creative um, as well as using your science knowledge. That being said, I'm going to see to kind of start a little a little um, artistic situation, but also give you an opportunity to observe. Okay, to observe how this spe specific medium interacts, reacts to, mixes with, or does not mix with two liquids. Okay. So I have something called Gamzol. Okay. Can we see it? Over there. Um, inside of the other cup, I'm going to pour a little bit less. And I am going to wait just to make sure that I know the difference between the mediums. All right, so I've got my H2O water, and then I've got my GAM, my GAM song. Okay. Now, first thing I'm going to do this this is oil paint. Okay, see, do you see that there? It says oil paint. Let's find out, or let's demonstrate how oil paint can mix with, or cannot mix with, certain things. And this is regular oil paint. This is not water mixable. Okay, can't. Take this off. Just got some colors here. You see, I'm kind of really doing a palette situation here. And this is me playing with paint from a scientist's perspective. I'm just curious, like, what will happen? Okay, again, water. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to take my brush. Um, I don't want to take that brush. I'm going to do 
dip my brush into water. As I do that, you make a prediction. I have oil paint and I have water. These are not water mixable oil paints. What do you think is going to happen? Try to like mix it or lay it down, okay? What do you think? All right, so first of all, I'm putting this down, okay? I'm gonna tilt you. Let's see if I can tilt Facebook a little bit better, just so you can see a little bit better. Might not be able to see a lot better, okay? So I've got that there. Now, I'm gonna take my brush and try to dip it back into my water. Do you see what happened? Did it mix with the water? Did it mix with the water? Look at my brush. See my brush? Oil paint. Yes. Yes, artists have an understanding, okay, of how things work. Okay, so let's take that same color. Okay, let's take that same color. See my brush now? That I dipped it in the gamsol. Okay, and then I put it in the in, in the paint. Okay. And now I'm going to put it back in the gamsol. Now look. So is this type of paint Missable, as in it mixes in with the gamsol? I would say, yeah. Okay, and let's look at these. So this is my water sample. And this is my gamsol. Gamsol, filler, gamsol, okay? Some of you may not care. I care, because I think it's cool. I think mixing chemicals together is really cool. Okay, and finding out how they act and finding out what makes sense for me to use. So based on what I just found, it makes more sense for me to continue on with my brush that was in the Gamsol, right? Well, let's make a little grass here. I'm gonna make a quick little picture now, right? So I took my science knowledge and used it to help me make an art piece. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm taking my science knowledge and using it to help me make a piece of art. Do you see that? Do you see how easily it's now spreading out? Okay, because I'm using the correct liquid the correct medium to work with it okay and that is a science concept right i'm just looking at how um this type of paint typically reacts you see how smooth that's now going down oil paint can be very thick okay and can be hard to move but see now it's really going down very smoothly and i'm able to actually like make it spread out See, I'm able to actually make it really, really spread out and become, um, and it's really um, going across my page quite quickly. All right? Do you see what I've got going on here? Just kind of doing some little grass, little situation. Okay. So, folks, make sure you put in the comments, isn't it though? It's really cool. I've got like a great comment. Thank you so much for commenting. Yeah, it's, it's cool to be able to see how knowing some science can help us with art. Okay. Um, and the other arts are like that as well. Like the amount of science that folks are using these days when they're making these awesome movies, um, like Black Panther, you know, I don't go to the movies a lot. And I'm very particular about the movies that I do go to, go see. 
Um, but yeah, so Black Panther, not only was there a character in that movie, right, that was an awesome scientist, type in the, type in the comments the name of that character, who's the scientist, the main scientist in that character, in that um, movie, right, in Black Panther, hint, his sister, yes, okay, right, so she used her science knowledge, but she also had to be creative when she was thinking of making his new suit and all that type of stuff. Right? She had to be creative. And when she when you're engineering, you're being really creative and you're using your math and science knowledge to come together to make something that's useful, that solves a problem and a hurt and, a, and um meets an issue that might be um going on. Okay. So yeah. Continue to make your comments and um ask questions. Okay, so we are, you see here, I'm just kind of doing that now. Based on what we learned, does it make sense for me to even attempt to dip into the water? No, right? Not unless I wanted to get this kind of texture. Not unless I wanted to get this kind of like really rough texture, which maybe that's what I want. But if I'm wanting to really be able to like use my paint and make my materials go um, far instead of having to use like a lot of paint right do you see how easily that spreads okay i'm gonna click back over to my other brush okay so i can get some more clouds over here another another cloud <laughs> i'm really having some fun Scientists do have fun, guys, I'm telling you. We have a lot of fun mixing our chemicals together and learning different things. Yeah? So once again, this is Miss Steph here. Thank you for joining me for Saturday Science with Miss Steph. And we just had a quick um, lesson, right, on how knowing how materials mix together or don't mix together okay and the science word for that is miscible or immiscible okay how liquids and substances mix together right or don't mix together we just learned how that's important when we're doing things like this making some art this is my quick now for those of you who are like more <laughs> gifted in your um you know, in your visual arts, I'm sure that this would be like a better picture. Um, but you know, hey, I, I'm, I'm exploring here. I'm just having, I'm having a little, little fun, right? And I'm going to actually throw down some red. And really, I love it that you guys like join me, you know, on my quest and adventure to um, bring science to the masses, right? This is for, you know, all of us. There are so many um, things that are going on right now, but for me, it's really important that, um, um, you know, children in our community get to learn this kind of stuff. So this is why I'm making it accessible to you, okay? Yes, yes, yes. I love it. Thank you. Oh, such a kind comment. Oh, man. Okay. Really important that this be accessible. So let's do a quick review of what I did with this part. Yes. For my for the sister watching with her um, girls. Thank you so much. Um, quick review of what we just did. And then I'm going to go back to show you our activity, our little controlled experiment, right? Because don't we always do an art activity and a controlled experiment? So today with our art, just you see my little art, you can see my little clouds. And of course I could probably use a little bit more blue in my sky, right? Which right now it has none, but I have blue here. I was planning on doing that. Um, so I have oil paint. These are my paints. I took some oil paint and I said to myself, well, let's experiment or tinker rather. 
okay? And let's find out how oil paint will respond, react, mix with all of, you notice I purposely used three different words so that you could really have a comprehension of what I'm talking about. Let's see how oil paint interacts with two different liquids. Because we all know, even little kids, right? When we're painting, we need some type of liquid to help us spread it on the paper, to help thin out the paint, to help clean it up later. And my two liquids that I used, I used some water inside of here, okay? And I also used a substance called Gamsol, which if you go to the paint store, there are specific liquids that you purchase to be able to use, see how my paint like really mixed in with that, to be able to use with oil paint. And so I said to myself, I'm curious how, you know, oil paint mixes or doesn't mix with water and whether or not it would change the texture of the paint on my paper and if I can make something um, artistic with it, right? And so I found out, I demonstrated very quickly with you, just quickly on, on, on um, our live today, just now, um, that really, it is true. It's not just something that someone is telling you that oil doesn't mix with water. No, guess what? You can find out for yourself and observe for yourself how oil and oil-based paint um, really doesn't mix with water and you need some other type of substance. And so this substance I used today, again, was Gamsol. And I'm actually very, for those of you wondering about the smell and all that type of stuff and how safe it is, I'm actually personally very smell sensitive. And actually the smell is not bothering me. It's not a strong smell like some other like oil paint friendly mediums are can be really strong and hard to like sit in the room with and it'd be a safety issue. That's not the case with this stuff, which is why I got it. Because I work with children, you guys, right? And I want you to be safe, okay? Um, so yeah, so that's my little art that I created. Now, who wants to see, who wants to see what happened with our um, science experiment, right? That was our science art teacher. But let's get a let's look at our experiment. Let's look at our jelly crystal gel gel crystal samples. Okay. So I have these gel crystals. And they're all the same. They're different colors, but they're all the same. I have these gel crystals. And you can hear that they're actually a hard substance, right? And then I put them in different volumes of water. I used my math knowledge and my measurement skills, okay, that's really important, to then test and find out if the volume of water has, a diff has an effect on how the crystals grow. And I left them for the same amount of time. So you notice that the same amount, because they all have the same amount, this one scoop, okay, of crystals, they have the same amount of crystals, but three different volumes of liquid, okay, volume, that's a way that we measure liquids, okay, the amount of liquid, those three volumes, I'm going to tilt you down one more time, Facebook, so you can really get a, a good, a good um, image of it. And here we go, Instagram. You see the three different volumes really, truly gave me, okay, different results. So the amount of water that's in there does make a difference. So you have to have enough water for them to get to um, their biggest size. Okay, so I'm going to put a little paper towel and do like I did last week and put the samples out so that you're able to... Uh-oh. So that you're able to see. Sorry, guys. Things happen. They were shooting live. <laughs> My samples fell on the floor, but not all of it. Okay, so that you're able to see. 
So in 20 milliliters of water, now this was at the bottom, so these are going to be bigger because they were at the bottom, okay? But still, you, you're, you should be able to notice that they are different sizes, okay? And you're able to see that the different color is just it's just color it doesn't change the substance okay so you see this yellow one is the smallest it was in the smallest volume I'm going over to Instagram guys I haven't forgotten you and then we've got our blue is the medium size and there so see how the sizes vary because the amount of water that it was able to absorb all right it really is let me make sure really good look at it. okay move it back a little bit yeah it was really quite cool super absorbent pollen three different volumes gave us three um final sizes of crystals Okay, so the amount of water that you add to your crystal, to your jelly crystals, does make a difference. For those of you curious and really wanting to maybe order them or something, okay. those are, that's what they're, that's the name. All right, jelly crystals. So, I think we had a great time today. I think we learned a lot. I learned a lot. Or rather got to see a lot. I thought it was fun. Okay. So, um, this has been Miss Steph. My name is Stephanie Farmer. Um, I am the executive director of Triple F Empowerment Inc. And we operate the awesome and wonderful program called Miss Steph Science Club. We bring um, science to the Harlem community and beyond. Yes. And we really want to make sure that our community has access to these fun and exciting science activities. Please, please put in any requests or um, comments inside of the comments um, box over here. Please let me know if you're curious about a specific activity. And as I like to say, if I've got it in the um, cabinets in the other room, or if I can um, somehow obtain the materials needed to do the activity, I absolutely will do it for a Saturday Science um, at 2.30 Eastern Standard Time, um, or I will do it for a Wednesday afternoon pop-up. Our Wednesday afternoon pop-ups are usually around 3.45 on Wednesday. Thank you so much for joining me, and um, have a wonderful afternoon, okay? Bye, guys. You've been watching Saturday Science with Miss Step. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe to my channel so that you never miss any of the awesome content.